Mysterious, deadly bombings tonight in Indonesia. At least 50 people have been killed tonight, many of them tourists. The largest number of foreigners killed and injured in the Bali attacks were Australian. In 2002, as a result of the Bali bombing, the window to our world was open and people wanted to know what we were doing. The resale technology, known as spray on skin, is actually taking skin cells from a normal site and the cells in that normal site are repairing you day in, day out. We're repairing all the time. So we take those, that skin, we harvest those skin cells that are actively turning over and they would use those to spray on to the wound. The whole resale technology is driven to be the fastest way we can get cells in the right place and so it cut down the time uh, such that we could harvest cells at the bedside and cut down the cell time in the laboratory from three weeks to ten days, five days to thirty minutes. The spray on skin, you know, the grafting, um, look, I, I've seen pictures of burns and, and, you know, people who haven't had her care and unfortunately, you know, it's been some pretty horrific scarring. Whereas this one, you know, you do what she said to do, as in the care of it. I mean, it's amazing. Some people don't really notice it. You only have to see with the work she's done how good, how good she is. We established a company such that our, the royalties could go into our research foundation and we assigned our intellectual property to the foundation to try and uh, facilitate that research going forward. That was all in play and it was a coincidence that in fact everything came together in 2002 and was rather busy, but it wasn't by design. The major challenges in taking any kind of idea through the whole process of innovation to commercialisation are many. Uh, and funding underpins it. I think we underestimate the, the requirements of funding and, and time. And of course they go hand in hand. There has to be a regulatory framework around all uh, we do. And that keeps, I think the regulatory framework with it be TGA or currently going through the FDA is very appropriate. The main funding that uh, clinical cell cultures had and then on to Avida Medical has been investors and uh, some believing in us and, and hopefully hanging in there. Be, and I think it is for the long haul, it is a long haul situation. A few years ago when we had the uh, support of the Armed Forces Institute of Regenerative Medicine, it changed the landscape significantly. People really started to take this whole technology seriously. There's so many things happening in Australia. There is such a lot of, of good brain power. You know, uh, I mean, we've had a, a number of Nobel Prize winners. and So there's a lot of opportunities. And I think what we need to do is understand how to collaborate better. How to collaborate between science, medicine, innovation, engineering, and with business. And I think one of the great things I've seen is young guys and girls in universities doing dual degrees, doing science and commerce, that kind of thing. And I think that's where we'll see how we can actually integrate uh, and take some of those fantastic Australian ideas and really run with them globally. Will it, uh, the whole uh, concept snowball? I certainly hope so. I think there's a lot of potential and also a lot of potential for uh, the technology to be used in different ways. I think that certainly is our goal and uh, I'm sure we will achieve that. It's just a question of when will that start to flow.